Okay, in this video we're going to look at this fairly general theorem which will give us a Frobenius a series solution for a differential equation. And so we have the following differential operator L and it acts on Y by the following. So we have X squared times this quadratic polynomial with coefficients uh, indexed by alpha y double prime plus x and then another quadratic polynomial with betas y prime and then finally um, a, the constant one times this uh, quadratic polynomial with gammas times y. So that's our differential operator. And now we set pi for i 0, 1, and 2 equal to the following polynomial in the variable r. So we have alpha i r times r minus 1, beta i times r, and then gamma i. And then we define the following coefficients. So we have a naught of r is 1. a 1 of r is this quotient of the polynomial P1 and P0 evaluated at R and R plus 1 uh, respectively. And then we have this two-step recursion involving the polynomials P1, P2, and P0 all evaluated at slightly different spots that allows us to write a n of R in terms of a n minus 1 and a n minus 2. Finally, if we define the following series, y, x, r, and so it's the sum where the coefficients are these um, numbers a, n, r, and then we have x to the n plus r, so we're offset from being a power series by a little bit. So this has the property that if you evaluate it by the differential operator, you get the polynomial P0 evaluated at R times X to the R. So I have a previous video, part one of this Frobenius method series, where we end the theorem right here and we prove that very carefully. So uh, I urge you to look at that video first. but. As an extension to that, we have the following, which we'll state and talk about the proof, but we won't actually prove it. And that is, if R1 is bigger than or equal to R2, and, well actually, let's make it strictly bigger than for this case. So if R1 is bigger than R2, and it's a real number, and let's say those are roots of the polynomial P0 of R, and we also have this other condition, R1 minus R2 is not an integer, then we have two linearly independent solutions to this differential equation, and I should point out that this differential equation is Ly equals zero, but I left, I ran out of room a little bit, and those two different solutions are given by these series where we set R equal to R1 and R2 respectively. So that's um, pretty clear that that should work. So notice if we have one solution and we plug it in here, um, <clears throat> then this is going to disappear. Good. And then if we have another solution, it'll also disappear. And then why do we need this notion that the difference is not in z? Well, we need that because otherwise we would potentially get a zero in the denominator um, in this recursion. So that clears up why the end of this theorem works. So now let's look at an example. So here's the following example I want to look at uh, for this video. So we have x squared times uh, 3x squared plus x plus 2 y double prime and then plus 11x squared plus 4x plus 3y prime, um, and that should all be multiplying x, so let's sneak that in there. Finally, we have plus negative 3x squared uh, plus 2x minus 1 plus 2x minus 1 times y equals 0. So this is the differential equation that we want to solve. So notice, in this case, we have P0 of R is the following. So it'll be uh, 2 times R times R minus 1, and then plus 3R plus 3R minus 1. Good. So this is 2, 3, and negative 1. So notice uh, that's going to give us the following. So that gives us 2R squared plus R minus 1. Good. And that factors like... Um, r plus 1 to r plus 1. So that tells us that we have our roots, our roots, sorry, this should be r to r minus 1. So that means we have r1 equals a half and r2 equals negative 1 in the language of this theorem over here. 
Okay, good. Now uh, let's go ahead and write P1 of R. So using the same strategy, we have P1 of R is uh, R times R minus one, and then plus four R, good, and then plus two. Okay, good, and then notice that is going to give us the following, so that'll give us um, r squared plus 3r plus 2. Okay, good, and then that thing factors like r plus 1, r plus 2. So r plus 1, r plus 2. And then finally, we have uh, p2 of r will be given by the following, so that'll be given by a 3 times r times r minus 1, and then plus 11 times r minus 3. Okay, good. And then I'll just skip to the end here. This factor is like 3r minus 1, and then like r plus 3. <clears throat> okay, so now we have our polynomials. So now what we need to do is stick our polynomials into this recursion and then come up with the coefficients. We won't be able to get a closed form in this case, but we will be able to get the first several coefficients of the solution and that's what we'll do. Okay, so I'll clean up this side of the board and after I clean up this side of the board, we'll finish it off. Okay, so previously we just calculated these polynomials and notice we can always set a naught of r equal to one. Um, that's built off of this series and it's because we have a homogeneous uh, differential equation here so we can always set that coefficient equal to one. It would be a free variable usually. And then we have a one of r is equal to the following. So this is going to be equal to, in our case, minus r plus one times r plus two all over r plus two and then two r minus one. Okay, great. And so uh, we get that just from this thing right here and that should be two r plus one. Okay, good, but notice this thing cancels a little bit, and we get a minus r plus 1 over 2r plus 1. That's what we have for our coefficient of a1, and now finally for our coefficient of a n, uh, we have the following two-step recursion. So in this case, we'll have um, negative, and then we'll have n plus r, and then n plus r plus 1, um, times a n minus 1 and I'll leave off my dependence on r just to save myself a little bit of room and then I'll have plus 3 n uh, plus 3 r minus 7 and then the next one is n plus r plus 1 and then uh, this ends with a n minus 2 so that's my entire numerator and then my denominator, building off of this again, we have n plus r plus 1 times uh, 2n plus 2r minus 1. Okay, good. And notice, we're going to be able to cancel this in the denominator with this, these two guys in the numerator to give us a slightly simpler recursion. Okay, so now that we've got our recursion on our coefficients, I'll clean up the board, and then after I clean up the board, I'll write down the first several terms of the solution. Okay, so now uh, plugging in values for n and r, we get the following uh, two solutions, and I'll just write the first several terms of each. So we have y of x half, so this is the one where r equals half, so this is going to be equal to x to the half, and then the next term is minus three quarters x to the three halves. Good, and then the next one is plus 11 over 32, x to the 5 halves. Good, and then the next one is plus 91 over 384, x to the 7 halves. Good, and then for good measure, I'll do one more, and that will be plus 221 over um, 122, 
eight, eight, zero, and then x, that's x to the nine has, and then I have plus dot, dot, dot. So like I said, given that recursion that we had before, there's no nice closed form for these um, coefficients, but these, it, this is like the uh, Taylor polynomial. It's not quite a polynomial, but the Frobenius polynomial, if you will, um, that approximates the solution. Okay, good. Now let's look at y of x minus 1. So that's the other root to the uh, polynom the p0 polynomial minus 1. And so that's going to give us 1 over x plus 4. 4x, so there's no constant term in that case, minus 8 over 3x squared plus 40 over 21x cubed. Good, and then I'll write, uh, sorry, this should be x to the fourth, x to the fourth, and then uh, finally we have 200 over 189x to the fifth plus dot dot dot. Okay, so these are uh, approximations to the solution of this differential equation. Okay, we're done.